and welcome to Diabetes Connections in the News. I'm your host, Stacey Sims, and these are the top diabetes stories and headlines of the past seven days. We go live on social media first, and then all sources linked up at diabetes-connections.com when this airs as a podcast. The news is brought to you by the world's worst diabetes mom, real-life stories of parenting a child with type 1 diabetes, winner of Best New Nonfiction at the American Book Fest, and named a Book Authority Best Parenting Book, available in paperback, ebook, or audiobook at Amazon. Our top story this week is a very interesting LinkedIn post about a new company and product. Luna Diabetes aims to fill in a big gap overnight automated control for people who use smart insulin pens. Take a look at this. They are calling it AI for automated injections, a way to combine the convenience of insulin pens with the clinical outcomes of automated insulin delivery, you know, like control IQ or looping. Some very heavy hitters here. The founders are John Scholand, founder of Timesalin, John Brilliant, a co-founder of Bigfoot Biomedical, and Sean Saint, founder of Companion Medical, who made the in-pen automated pen system. The release shows this device, but no other real information yet. Is it an automated basal delivery system for overnights only? Something else? Pivotal trials to start by the end of the year, and we will keep you posted on this. A look at pediatrics in underserved communities shows that most children are not meeting A1C goals. A new grant from the Helmsley Charitable Trust will focus on expanding access to remote care. Many providers lack the money to set remote care up and to use it effectively, you know, telehealth systems, things like that. A large pediatric endo group in Buffalo, New York, will work with Cecilia Health, a virtual first health care provider. They'll work with about a thousand patients to explore how improving access to remote support and the internet can better manage chronic conditions and whether that will improve outcomes. This is along with existing diabetes technology like pumps and CGMs. Big news for people with diabetes in Australia. The government has committed to subsidized access to continuous glucose monitoring and flash glucose monitoring technology for all people living with type 1. Right now, people under 21 are eligible, as are women who are actively planning a pregnancy or are pregnant. But this agreement will make everyone eligible for just over $30 a month. Right now, it costs over $300 a month, so that's significant. And I will link up more information from the incredible Diabetes Australia advocate, Renza Shabilia, who's been on the show before and who's been working on this for more than 10 years. So congrats to Renza and to all who will benefit. Not a big surprise here, but new information about improving life expectancy in people with type 2. This study shows reducing your A1C, blood pressure, cholesterol, and BMI makes a big difference. This was a University of Florida Gainesville study. Biggest improvement in all of these was reducing A1C from the highest in the study, about 9.9, to the lowest, about 7.7, added almost four years of life expectancy. These researchers say it's very motivating to patients and clinicians to see these gains, and it may help them choose treatment goals. We've talked about one drop before, more than a meter. They now call themselves a digital coaching company. And a new evaluation from an independent third party found that OneDrop's support program effectively improves the health of people living with prediabetes, diabetes, and high blood pressure. The program could also cut down on annual health care costs. This is from the Independent Validation Institute dedicated to providing unbiased data-driven insights on healthcare solutions. The Validation Institute financially guarantees the program's effectiveness. And this means people who follow the program properly but do not improve their blood pressure or A1C can file a claim with Validation Institute for up to $25,000. All right, this newscast is going live on April 20th or 420. There are a lot of questions about whether marijuana, which is now legal in a lot of the U.S., is okay to use if you have diabetes. I'm going to link up some information for you in the show notes here, but most of this focuses on the slightly altered state weed can put you in. And for many, that means being more relaxed. But for some, it may interfere with diabetes management in the moment. And there's nothing specifically good or bad about marijuana that I could find for people with diabetes. However, there is a warning for any pregnant women. Children who are exposed to cannabis in utero may be at risk for obesity and high blood sugar later in life. On this week's long format episode, Dr. Mark Heyman is a diabetes psychologist who lives with type 1. He has great advice for the most undertreated part of diabetes, the mental health aspect of it all. And next week, you'll hear from Civica RX. This is the company pledging to put out insulin without making a profit. We'll hear why they think this will work and how soon you may be able to buy it. 
Listen wherever you get your podcasts. And that is it for In the News this week. If you like it, please share it. Thanks so much for joining me. I'll see you back here soon. Diabetes Connections is a production of Stacey Sims Media. All rights reserved, all wrongs avenged.